Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Kamara Score Studio yet again today. This is the third time if you're keeping track. Because, uh, well, it's not spoiler season, but it's also not the first look or whatever they're calling it. It is just, uh, hey, Wizards doesn't know how to manage their cards properly, apparently, and somehow some package got into someone's hands that wasn't supposed to get them that early. And, uh, yeah, we've got some leaks to talk about today. And what a crazy day it has been. If you've seen my earlier episodes, make sure you check those outs. Those outs? My goodness gracious. I do need that second cup of coffee. I did get tea, um... But, uh, but, no, nah, I, I mean, I might need some more coffee, I guess. It's probably what I actually need. It's just kind of, like, rainy and cold today, so I was like, ah, tea sounds good. And then, of course, you know, my dog decides on a day like today that well, today would be just a great day to walk around outside, just run through mud. Great. Coming right back up, having to get, you know, taken up to a bath really quick. So, uh, yeah, with all that said, let's jump to the actual card for the episode, and that is Narset Enlightened Exile. And, uh, really quick. Blame Eddie in the comments below because Eddie definitely helped out a ton on this episode. And if I make any mistakes on this episode, of course, it's Eddie's fault, not mine. Now, Narset Line Exile is a 3-4 human monk that costs one blue, red, white. Creatures you control have prowess. That's already quite spicy right there. Again, prowess is whenever you cast, I believe, a non-creature spell, right? Your creature gets plus plus one until end of turn. So if you cast a lot of those, your creatures can get quite pumped. Then it says, whenever Narset Line Exile attacks, exile target non-creature, non my card, mana value less than Narset's power from a graveyard and copy it. You may cast copy without paying its mana cost. Um, there's a lot going on there. That is really cool, number one. Number two, thank you, Eddie, but also blame Eddie, uh, for pointing out that this does say a graveyard. Not just your own any graveyard i like that wizards are starting to go in this direction and giving you access to your opponent's graveyards it is very spicy very fun we just saw it on the newest herbrask and now we're seeing it on this and yeah getting access to someone else's graveyard is really cool and yeah being able to cast one of their non-creature non-lands for free is great so yeah basically uh i mean i, I it, it's kind of weird that it does say like i mean i guess just for a rules perspective it does say like exile target non-creature non-land i mean you because it does say cast, I guess. So I guess, I mean, you still couldn't just, you know, initiate the target for a land and then exile it. I'm getting off the point. Regardless, you can cast a lot of cool things from your graveyard in your opponent's graveyards for free. Now, this is based on its own power. But Narset, of course, can get a lot more power because, well, she's got, you know, the prowess. Uh, all the creatures you control prowess, including Narset. So you cast some on creature spells, that power is going to get up. And of course, there's other ways to pump Narset as well. Maybe some anthems, maybe some equipment. We'll talk about some cards here in a little bit. And yeah, blame Eddie again in the comments below because Eddie helped out with a lot of the cards on this episode. And I just want to make sure you blame Eddie. Even, you know what? Blame Eddie for Bentley running through the mud. For my dog running through the mud, it is Eddie's fault. Blame Eddie in the comments below. Uh, also, uh, blame Eddie for me for getting to say that, hey, um... This, uh, obviously, is just a custom card. Uh, this is a custom card that I made on MTG.Design, which is a fantastic website. Uh, but it is an actual, you know, based off of an actual card that is, well, debated to be an actual card because it is a leak, not a spoiler. Meaning that Wizards hasn't officially confirmed it. Uh, not sure I did like the Dr. Evil there. Uh, terribly. Uh, but basically, yeah, uh, it is not officially, you know, a real card yet. Even though if you've seen the images of it, uh, it seems incredibly legitimate, like all the other cards that were leaked. And uh, yeah, there is going to be a card list link in the description below. Uh, consider picking up some of those. But again, if you don't, I mean, consider picking up, I guess, if you're 100% confident that this is a real card. If you're not, yeah, definitely wait uh, until uh, this is actually confirmed to be a real card. So you don't pick up cards for a fake card. And I don't believe this is fake. It looks very real. If I had to, you know, say one way or the other, I'd be like 99.9999999% chance that this is real, according to me. But yeah, if you don't feel that way, that's okay. Regardless, this is a commander where you can do some pretty evil things with it. I mean, a couple of things come to mind. Maybe some extra combats uh, again and again and again, like the old Narset. Maybe some extra turns, maybe some gross things. Let's get into them. On this episode, like my other ones, I'm going to take you through budget buys and price your picks. Cards that are less than $1 for the budget buys. Price your picks for the cards that are above $1. And uh, yeah, let's jump into those budget buys that you might want to consider. And you know what? Let's blame Eddie one more time. I might blame Eddie again, but a really big blame, Eddie, because Eddie, you didn't bring up in all the cards that you sent me. You sent me like 50 cards to consider for this. All right, you did amazing work. But still, you missed the first one that came to my mind and one of my favorite cards, Inevitable Betrayal. 
any opportunity I have to utilize this with a commander, I take. Sorcery for no mana. There's no mana value there, no mana cost at all. So basically it costs zero, kind of. Suspend three for one blue blue, but we're not gonna suspend this with this commander, or maybe you do it the first time, but yeah, if we can get it in the graveyard, great. It says, search target opponent's library for a creature card, put that card on the battlefield under control, that player shuffles. Basically bribery, but uh, a zero mana version of it that you can't cast, kind of. But hey, if it's in your graveyard, your commander's like, cool, I attack. Oh, look, an El Betrayal. Is my power large enough? Uh, yeah, because hey, um, yeah, the, the, it's a zero mana card. So there you go. Next up, and again, blame, blame Eddie for not bringing that one up. Next up, Eddie also didn't bring up, of course, Resurgent Belief. If you've got a good amount of enchantments uh, in this kind of a deck, and yeah, there's, again, your commander can help you get enchantments back out of your graveyard. This is a great way, way to kind of just like skip some steps and be like, yeah, let's get all of them. Hey, uh, return all enchantment cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. So yeah, basically, uh, again, you can just suspend two for this for one and a white. Or again, if it's in your graveyard, utilize it with your commander. Again, its cost is zero. So yeah, you can just basically cast it for free with that attack. Next up, we've got Fateless Looting. Again, you might actually want to cheat some things in your graveyard instead of actually, you know, spending, you know, your actual mana on those things. Just get them in your graveyard so your commander can get that trigger and then you can cast them for free. And again, utilizing low to the ground cards like this one, Faithless Looting, basically loot two, draw two, discard two, flashback for two and a red. This is great because, hey, it adds to your prowess count, essentially, right? It's going to pump your team. It's going to pump your commander, which can be fantastic to help you cast bigger things at your commander. And you just hit harder with your team as well. And speaking of hitting hard, um, yep, like I talked about earlier, got some cards that you can really pump your commander's power with to ensure that you can basically cast absolutely anything black blade or forge yet you're not exactly in mana ramp colors in jeskai i mean mana ramp colors it's just really you don't have access to green so essentially uh, mana ramp i mean land ramp specifically but yeah you don't have more ways to get lands into play except for like wayfarers bobble which is an amazing card and i love it but there's only like one of it that you have access to regardless hey um yeah, yeah, you still just can pump your commander at the very least. This attach your commander, and you've got just you know four lands in play for your commander's cost essentially, right? Your commander's gonna have enough power to basically help you cast anything that you're going to want to cast for the vast majority of the game. And then the more and more lands you play, yeah, the harder your commander hits. Which again, you can give it, turn your commander very easily with this into a two shot KO, especially with those prowess triggers as well. I guess I probably should have said what this does. Plus plus one for each land you control. Very easy to equip to your commander. It just costs three because your commander is of course legendary. Moving on, a spell that is not legendary, but it does something very legendary in my opinion. Let's create an absurd amount of creature tokens out of nowhere. Call the Copper Coats is absurd, especially with a commander like this. Instant with a strive cost of one and a white, it costs two and a white. So basically, pay an extra one and a white for each other opponent that you want to target, essentially. Choose any of target opponents, create X11 human uh, soldier creature tokens or X number of opponents or creatures those opponents control. Basically, uh, seven mana instant speed before your turn. You're like, um, Okay, you've got five creatures, you've got 10 creatures, you've got six creatures. Uh, I'll make 21 creatures out of nowhere. Gross. Uh, and yeah, with that giant army of this commander again, all those creatures have prowess. Hi. Um, yeah, I'd like to move to combat in my next turn. And I'm going to cast uh, a couple of, uh, you know, of uh, non-creature spells uh, to pump my team. Uh, one. A two, a three. Okay, yeah. I'll come at you all with like uh, 80 damage or whatever. Okay, yeah. It's absolutely absurd. It is a game-ending card, and it is great with this kind of a commander. Or you can go, you know, slow and steady wins the race if you want. Sahili, Sublime Artificer is also another good one. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create a one, one color servo artifact creature token. You're going to be casting a lot of non-creature spells. It doesn't actually specify. I mean, I, none of these do, I guess. Cast whenever, you know, you cast a spell you own or whatnot. I wouldn't specify that. I don't know why I just brought that up. But basically, yeah. Basically, hey, if you're casting your spells from your graveyard or your opponent's spells from your graveyard, that is all that matters. You get to get servos. And this also can make artifacts and other artifacts. But still, the main thing is, hey, cast spells, make an army. They're prowessing servos now because, yeah, your commander. Next up, Vega the Watcher again. Hey, I think I brought this up on an earlier episode, but yeah. Anyways, whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, draw a card. You're going to be casting a lot of spells from your hand. You're also going to be casting a lot of spells from your graveyard and your opponent's graveyards as well. So, hey, draw some cards with this. Dig deeper into your deck to cast even more spells. And then next up, we've got Assemble the Legion. It's a great one that Eddie brought up, and I am so excited this one's budget-friendly. There was I was, like, waiting for years for this one to be budget-friendly, and finally it's gotten reprinted, I think, a couple times now. And now it's just like, yeah, cool. Uh, it's a very budget-friendly card, 16 cents, and it can make you an army 
an absolutely, well, it does take some time, but an absurdly large army over time. Beginning of your upkeep, you get a muster counter on it. Then you make a 1-1 one, one red and white soldier creature token with haste for each muster counter on it. Basically, make one, then make two, then make three, then make four. It just builds on itself, making an absurd amount of creature tokens. And again, they're hasty, and they also have prowess thanks to your commander. And then finally, a card that Eddie did not bring up. Blame Eddie in the comments below. Dictate of Heliod Enchantment Flash. Creatures you control get plus two, plus two. This one's kind of just a placeholder for essentially, hey, anthems can be very effective with this commander. Again, of course, there are plenty of ways to go wide with this commander, like we've talked about. A lot of ways to make a lot of creature tokens, which benefit from your commander's prowess. And yeah, you can benefit all those. You can also benefit your commander's power or something like this. Again, making your commander even to a five power creature can give you access to even more cards out of your graveyard, like, you know, this one. So yeah, basically kind of just allowing you to say, okay, I really want to cast a certain card of a graveyard, but to do so, I've got to cast like three non-creature spells to get that prowess up on my commander to be able to do that. This kind of essentially helps you close that gap on those bigger spells that you want to cast, okay? Essentially, hey, get a couple anthems in there. They're going to help you out for a couple of different reasons. A really good card to consider. Yeah. Make sure you're doing that and make sure you're considering the other budget buys. Again, card list link in the description below. But now let's move on to the pricier picks. And I've got a reminder just to say blame Eddie again. So do so. So blame Eddie in the comments below. Let's talk about the pricier picks again. Cards that are more than $1. We're going to start things off with Maddening Cacophony. Great pick, Eddie. Uh, hey, uh, kicker for a three and a blue. And you might want to kick it because uh, each opponent mills eight cards. That's already nice for just two mana. That's going to give you a lot of cards to choose from for your commander's trigger. But hey, um, you know what would be better than that? Let's play, you know, six man in total. Okay, we can do that. Uh, if it was kicked and said each opponent mills half their library rounded up. Okay, so assuming all of our opponents maybe have, let's say, 80 cards, okay? We just milled 40 cards per opponent, which means that that's 120 cards that are now in their graveyards that we have access to with our commander. Now, we don't have access to the lands or their creatures, but hey, there's bound to be some juicy non-creature spells in there, so have fun. Yeah, that's quite delicious. Next up, speaking of delicious, yeah, another one that actually only $2.95. I thought this one was like, oh, it was reprinted recently-ish. Okay. Mesmericorb is a great card, and if it's ever budget-friendly, my goodness, is this going to help me in quite a few decks out there. Whenever a permanent becomes untapped, that player, that permanent's controller mills a card. So basically, hey, this mills not only you, but all your opponents as well, filling your graveyard with some juicy things to target, filling your opponent's graveyards with some juicy things to, well, steal and target, essentially. So yeah, have fun with that. And you can double up the fun, double up the flavor, double up the everything with Stronic Resonator. Pay two tap, copy target, trigger ability control, choose targets for the, the copy. Basically, hey, your commander's attack trigger is a triggered ability, so hey, I'll be like, yeah, I'll pay two extra mana, which uh, can basically save you mana in the long run, because you're like, okay, yeah, um, I'll cast that uh, 10 mana spell out of a graveyard. Well, probably not 10 mana, but you know, if you've got other pump effects or whatever, you can cast some massive things out of graveyards and have a lot of value again just for paying an extra two mana with this. This card's expensive. Uh, <laughs> this is a really old card. I can't remember if this is reserve list or not. Am I just completely off base on that? I don't know. Intuition, a very good card. Search library for any three cards, reveal them to an opponent. Now, this is worded in a weird old way, but regardless, they choose one uh, for that card in your hand. The rest in your graveyard, shuffle your library afterwards. Basically, hey, um, go tutor for three cards. They're going to be cards that you want. And, uh, and yeah, one of them goes into your hand, the other go into your graveyard, which your commander is going to give you access to. So yeah, pick non-creature spells and just get access to them and have fun with that. Moving on. Oh my goodness. Uh, okay, first, uh, first of all, the price on this one just... I forgot about that. Yeah, this one is also reprinted recently. Uh, and uh, hey... Um, yeah, that price dropped quite a bit. 310 This used to be like $30, I think. Still, it's an incredible card for a deck like this. Monster Mentor. First up, Prowess. So this gets two instances of Prowess. I believe those I think those definitely stack, right? So yeah, essentially this would have two instances of Prowess thanks to your commander. So this can just become absolutely massive as you're swinging, which is nice. And then whenever you cast it on Creature Spell, you get a 1-1 one, one White Monk Creature Token with, you guessed it, Prowess. So hey, um, yeah, that's gross. Again, it's going to make tokens that essentially get plus two, plus two every single time you cast it on Creature Spell. <gasps> Gross. Uh, yeah, Monster Mentor. Great pick, Eddie. Blame Eddie. Uh, and also blame Eddie for this one. Twinning Staff. Uh, hey, if you would copy a spell one of our times, copy it that many times. Plus, initial time, you may copy new, choose targets for the spell. And you can pay seven to tap to copy target and spell you control. Choose targets to copy. Basically, hey, um, just keep this in play. And essentially, every single time you, you know, copy a spell with your commander, you are uh, doubling it up. You're getting two instead of one. 
gross and absurd amount of value have fun with that speaking of gross this one's fun Varen voice of duality a great commander of its own and uh magecraft whenever you cast a copy into a source spell gets plus plus one until have turn that's kind of i guess it's more it's not prowess because it's not a creature yep okay so there's the difference regardless this is basically kind of like a prowess ish and so prowess on top of that's very nice but also the more important thing is if you cast your copy and its source spell cause a triggered ability of a per you control to trigger that ability triggers additional time all your creatures have prowess which is a trigger so gross basically yeah they're going to be getting plus two plus two instead of plus one plus one that can get out of hand quite quickly um uh, speaking of hand hey uh it's gonna be harder for your opponents to stop your commander with whisper so cloak on it uh equipped creature can't be blocked and has shroud why did wizards can someone in the comments will let me know please why did they switch out unblockable and can't be blocked i'm unblockable makes complete sense to me like and it was like a keyword essentially at one point it's like this creature is unblockable okay so it can't can't be blocked same thing why did they switch it i don't know anyways and has shroud so shroud means that you can't target your commander but your opponents can't either but yeah regardless safe to swing through safe to get through on your opponents and uh and yeah safe to not be targeted by them or yourself as well and uh next up blame any for this because yeah this commander can be built in a very evil way uh not just extra combats which then you get more triggers from your commander but also of course extra turns quite easily with temporal manipulation those kinds of cards take an extra for this one you cast it and uh for some reason when wizards made this card and certain other ones they're like you know what extra turns of guys it doesn't exile they learned their lesson for the most part except for like that one instant speed one that shuffles into your library or whatnot that's yeah gross that root that not ruins some formats but definitely caused some problems uh but yeah uh not exiling is huge because now it's just gonna be in your graveyard so yeah just get your commander's power up just ever so slightly then take another extra turn if you can take like two extra turns in a row your opponents have like no chance of winning essentially at a certain point and of course if you've got an entire deck built around extra turns extra combats they're gonna have no chance because once you get things going they're not gonna be able to stop you Moving on, the final card that I'm going to bring up is Shark Typhoon. Thanks for bringing this one up, Betty. I absolutely love it. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create an XX Blue Shark Creature Shogun with Flying, where XX spells convert to mana cost. You can also cycle away if you want to, but you're not going to do that because that's too cool. I guess if you cycle away, you can get out of your graveyard for free uh, with your commander if you've got enough power. So maybe you just do that. There you go. But yes, uh, hey, uh, you get an absurd amount of value out of this. You just make a ton of flying sharks that with your commander now have prowess. So some prowess flying sharks. Great. Yeah, absolutely gross love the design of this commander again there's some really cool things that you can do with it some really evil things that you can do with it as well blame any of the comments below for all those things and again make sure you check out that card list link in the description below but again i do want to urge you again this is a leak it has not been officially confirmed yet to my knowledge so if you are worried that this isn't a real card do not buy cards for this commander but if you are convinced it's a real card and you're okay with that slight risk i guess then sure go for it because yeah it's a really cool commander regardless make sure you check out my other quick takes from today blame it in the comments below yet one more time for my dog running through the mud and me having to give it a bath um and then of course yeah as always thanks again and have a good one this show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you if you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. 